Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy Cosby, I'm the product manager for AtScale and in this video I'm going to go through the latest feature we've added which is called Dependency Hub. As you can see, we're currently in the middle of planning. We see Team Fox and Al has planned for a couple of features and user stories. And in this case, Team Fox is our backend team and Team Owl is our frontend team. Team Owl is currently planning for one-click checkout and they just realized that they need a secure payment storage and they want to ask if Team Fox can help with this. With the addition of new dependency hub, we can now send a request and ask Team Fox to help. By clicking new dependency, I can then fill in a title for what I need. And in this case, it's gonna be the secure payment storage. And I select that I request it from Team Owl. And I'm dependent on Team Fox. When I do this, it's gonna show me the requested by backlog because I'm, I'm gonna have to link what I need this dependency for. And in this case, it's gonna be the one-click checkout. So I can click a new item here or I can select one from the backlog. I can also let Team Fox know when I need this by, so I can choose an iteration. And in this case, I'm gonna say that I need it by iteration one. I can fill in more details here if I would like to, or I could leave as is. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna leave as is. So I click create. This creates a dependency request. We can see that it's requested by Team Owl, it's requested for one-click checkout and it depends on Team Fox. So Team Fox needs to do an action here, accept or decline. If we go back to the board, we're able to see that this created this new work item type called dependency request. If I open this one up, it says the title. And if I would have filled a description, I can do that here also in the earlier dialog. And this is pointing to the one-click checkout. Heading back to the dependency hub, Team Fox is gonna do an action here. So either they're gonna commit to this or decline it. And in this case, they're gonna accept it. When Team Fox accepts this dependency, they need to link it to an item that solves this need. So I can click here and look through the backlog of Team Fox, or I can create a new item. If I create a new item, or perhaps we're going to commit to secure payment storage, and I can select any work item type I want. So, but in this case, I'm going to select a user story. And we're going to commit to iteration one. So I create this user story. You can see that it's been created. And then I accept. Now the dependency request has been replaced with the actual user story. Heading back to the boards, we can see what has happened. We can see that now that we have one dependency request that has been accepted and one user story that's currently planned for to solve this one click uh, checkout. And to give you some tips and tricks, you can set an exclusion rule that if a dependency request is accepted, it's not gonna be shown on the board because it's always gonna show uh, the real dependency. So then I can click on the cogwheel here in boards I can then go to exclusion and I can set a rule here. For instance, I want to exclude every dependency request that has the state accepted. And now we can see that the dependency request disappeared. Heading back to dependencies, we can see that it's been accepted. It's currently planned. If I would head back to the board and let's say some things would change. So for instance, this user story might come at a later point in time. Let's say that the feature is planned for iteration four instead, and the secure payment storage is gonna be delivered later. This is gonna show a signal here immediately on the dependency hub that it's late. Now let's give an example of how a decline would look. So let's say that, for instance, that the Team Fox, they need an environment for testing. So they're gonna ask the DevOps team to help with this. And Team Fox, they need it for the dynamic pricing engine because they need to do some testing on this. 
they can say that they need it by iteration too. And fill in. So I've written that we need this to test our new feature. I can then click create. Same thing here, if we head back to the board, I have now set a rule that I don't wanna show things that have been ac has been accepted. And if we go down here and check, we can see we have a new thing pointing from the DevOps team. So I can click here just to show. So we have the environment for test that is needed for dynamic pricing engine. And in this case, the DevOps team, they're gonna decline this dependency. And they're gonna say that they can't commit. Uh, they have too many dependencies to this PI and they wanna focus for this for the next one. This is gonna show that it has been uh, declined. And we can also read the reason why. If we go to the board and check, we can see that it also has been updated to the status declined here. So then it, this opens up for the possibility to have these discussions. Perhaps this feature has to be moved to the next PI. Uh, another thing you can view in the dependency hub are the different metrics here. So we can see on the left side, we can see total requests. If anything has the status waiting, which means it's pending. So we have created two dependencies. One has been declined and the ones accepted, they move to the right side here. So we can see one is planned and one is late. Now I can also click on settings and then I can change some configuration here. So in the first option here, I have selected to introduce this custom work item type called dependency request. But when you use this for the first time, you can also choose your own. So if I wanna have my own item, perhaps I already have one in place, maybe called dependency, something like this, I can choose this instead, rather than creating a new work item type. I can also choose no configuration, and essentially what this does, it's a list of predecessor and successors. So you're gonna lose the capability of essentially sending a request. So it's just gonna show all your dependencies. Heading back here to the view, you can also, let's say you would have 20 dependencies. It can be a little bit trickier to view. So you can use our filter function here. If I wanna see everything that I have requested, so if I wanna see everything the Team Fox has requested, I can easily filter here. Or if I wanna see everything that someone has asked from my team, I can click that here as well and it will show in the list. I can sort by iterations, I can sort by status, committed by, responses, so if I wanna see everything that has been accepted, declined, I can do that, and different work item types. The good thing here with the dependency hub is we'll always show the reality of your dependencies. So no matter what filters you have, or it will always show your team's true dependencies. So as you can see, it says that this currently is a preview. We welcome you to give us feedback by clicking here or read information here. I wanna thank you for listening and I look forward to hearing your feedback and look where this feature will take us in the future. Thank you for watching.